The cleanup has started at the burnt out Brickdam police station following a fire last Saturday, which gutted several buildings in the compound, housing several departments within the division. The fire destroyed the commander's office, inquiries, CID, the traffic department, the officer's mess, and the police prosecutor's office. Several vehicles and motorcycles were destroyed as the fire service struggled to contain the blaze. 16 prisoners who were at the time in the lockups were all safely evacuated. Policemen and women were busy trying to move documents, files and weapons, tactical shields and other items. The Farley gas station was at one point on the threat added to that an adjoining building which served as the office of Cannes Auto Dealership was also gutted. The fire at one time threatened the houses and businesses on Hatfield Street with fire tenders on the scene without water and in some cases refusing help to access water from a nearby fire hydrant. Attorney at law says Gunraj was visibly upset with members of the Guyana Fire Service as he watched the fire threaten his law office. Unfortunately, I could only give them a failing grade. Um, and the elements, the natural elements of, of wind are, I think, protecting what um, the buildings that I'm concerned with on Hartview Street. What I'm seeing is gross incompetence. They are being pointed out, uh, fire hydrants that are um, apparently in working order that have recently been serviced and up to now. I've been out here over an hour. Um, no, no attempt has even been made to look at the fire hydrant. I'm looking at it and uh, admittedly when I came here, the fire was raging, uh, but I have seen absolutely no effort made to contain that fire. I'm not a firefighter. I don't know what the technicalities are, but of course, when I look at it, I can't see any tangible evidence of it being contained or uh, any um, any quelling of... At one time, the debris from the fire caught the building of Hughes, Fields and Stobie. Attorney at law Nigel Hughes and his wife Cathy Hughes pleaded with the fire service to access water from a fire hydrant in front of his office, but to no avail. We got a fire hydrant that's working and nobody can open it. I know the hydrant in front of my office is working. We paid a guided the service, they told me it wasn't working, and you could videotape it right there, it's working. Public spirited citizens opened the hydrant and got the water to help you save his building. Some Leopold Street residents then began chanting as government ministers came out to lend support to their colleagues. Hours after the fire was extinguished, the fire chief was not in a position to offer members of the media any update on the fire. I will let you know just now. I know, I know, I know. What time the fire just now, just now, I, I will brief you guys as soon as I finish my immediate. But there's nothing you can tell us at this No. Absolutely nothing. No. Three hours after the fire started, destroy this entire house. As soon as I, I will give you guys the update as soon as I finish. We still an investigation, the, the circumstances surrounding the fire. Hmm? No, I will let you know just now. As soon as I finish, I'll let you know. Commissioner of Police Acting Nigel Hoppy said the loss is very severe. However, that would not deter us. We've always already started immediately to put system in place to ensure that we are in keeping with our mandate of service and protection to the citizenry. The loss, um, we lost several buildings. As the minister would indicate, we lost also vehicles, some that uh, matters on the investigation, while others were vehicles that were destroyed, some in a significant way uh, belong to the Guyana Police Force. We are able to um, first and foremost save lives, which is one of our procedures to ensure force we save lives. So all of the 16 prisoners were accounted for and relocated to another location. And then the next step we did was to ensure that the arms and ammunition were secured. We were successful in also doing that. And then we, the next thing we did is to ensure that records were saved. Um, that we weren't able to save all of the records, but our efforts were, we put stringent efforts in place to ensure that a lot of records were saved. A lot of the ranks were committed to the task. And then other assets were saved. We were able to take out motorcycles and so on, including a generator. Home Affairs Minister Robson Ben said he expects 
an after action report from the Guyana Fire Service. In respect of all the events which occurred, that the Lord of the Fire, the assets which were deployed, the availability of water, the sources of water, and the, the ramps and persons which were up there. Issues relating to future building are already being considered by our engineers. We've already told them to think now about what we need in terms for a temporary uh, location and uh, in terms of a design for a new police headquarters building for 4A at Breakdown. The Guyana Fire Service arrived six minutes after the call was made and was unable to save the buildings. The Breakdown Police Station was the headquarters of Division 4A. Meanwhile, the Ghana Police Force is reporting that the Regional Police Division 4A headquarters will now be temporarily relocated to the St. Stanislaus College.